the session on the one or two hats. Ina, a uh, few week, weeks ago, I published a document, a strategic document on the uh, 112 app. So, um, with the, uh, the aim of uh, having a public uh, mobile emergency application with three strategic objectives. The first one is to, to have an architecture, a common architecture. The second objective is a set of guidelines for communicate uh, to the stakeholders. And the third objective is a program, a certification program to, to be all, uh, to have a secure and integrity of data transmitted to the, to the PISA. So today uh, we, we we had uh, yesterday a good, very good presentation on on us. So we'll uh, go again and ask uh, lesson learned requirements from the app already integrated within the uh, Europe, and we will uh, go more in depth in the strategic uh, objectives that uh, will lead to the Pan-European mobile emergency application that uh, we hope uh, will give you more information and, and good information next, uh, next year. So we have a, a very aggressive schedule to have uh, something concrete uh, uh, for next year. Okay. So for, to lead this discussion, I'm very pleased to, to have with me uh, some um, of people who, who have implemented the uh, 112 apps in Europe. So, and uh, I think we, we, we miss uh, Thomas, his last son, I think he's around taking uh, a cup of coffee. Or, you know, he's, he's, he's coming, I think it's, it's on the way, sure. Um, so, with me, uh, Beside Thomas is uh, Jordi Borre from Amplify. So Jordi is a business development director uh, at uh, Amplify. Amplify, you for, for those who had a chance to to, to see the <coughs> presentation yesterday, uh, has an application already implemented in uh, in Spain and uh, in uh, Andorra. One one two up. Then Kurt uh, Granter, uh, who is um, CAD product manager at uh, Astrid in uh, Belgium. And uh, Kurt uh, will uh, tell us about uh, the next uh, one one two app that um, Astrid is uh, implementing in uh, Belgium. And uh, just uh, beside me, uh, James, I think a lot of people know James. James is uh, vice chair of the uh, NG112 committee at INA and uh, Advisor. He's uh, also a contributor on the, on the work we are uh, doing on the PMA. PMA is Pan European Mobile European Emergency Application. Okay? So, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, I'm sure Thomas will join soon. Okay, so today in that uh, discussion there is uh, two steps, so current uh, situation and uh, uh, what needs to be done, okay? So talking about uh, 112 apps and of course the great popularity of, of, the, of this media. We, we have this slide, and this slide is uh, depicted the maps of all the, the apps already integrated in the, in the world. So, there exist hundreds of uh, additional apps, uh, but we focus there on really the app 
that's already integrated. Um, with a specific mention to, to Spain, as you can see, I don't know if it's uh, clear, but there is a lot of application. And that's uh, the media very well backed by uh, emergency services in that uh, country. So, so uh, why I want to have this uh, so well, I, I guess the response uh, we, we had uh, yesterday provided very good uh, accuracy and uh, <coughs> optimizing the, the time the rescue service um, for them to do on site and uh, rescue people and, uh, and find people in, uh, in self life. You know? So I think that's uh, that's a great uh, great tool. We are all convinced of that. So the question can be what why uh, cannot continue like it is today? I think that the, the issue we have, and I think that's the downside of, uh, of the, the success, is the success itself. Um, I mean, with the proliferation of apps, uh, we, we can lose a very, um, lot of challenges on the peace app and on the citizen to uh, to, to, to bypass. So I think that uh, is one of uh, the, the main issue uh, today. Uh, to, to have so much so much apps can be uh, an issue, and I can uh, give you an example. I'm in Bucharest uh, right now. If su supposing I need to, to call one one two uh, this afternoon on the way of the airport, and hopefully not. Um, so I believe in Spain I have a uh, few, few apps app in my mobile. I would expect a citizen could uh, use the, the, my own app uh, if I use Amplify or my uh, or two the Telefonica apps in Madrid to be able to contact the nearest piece app in Bucharest. I think that's the way it has to work and hopefully it will work in the, the next future. So that's uh, one side. The other side, see if I'm operating a piece app, I would like as many users uh, use their app and especially the foreigners uh, who come to, to my country without having to integrate each application server in my PSA. So that's really the, the two, two key things we need to, to have in mind. So on one side, the easiness, and the, I think that's the good presentation yesterday, he insists on the um, on the keep it simple, I think that's uh, the, one of the key things on the application provider side. And uh, on the other side, to, to, to make the, the life easier for the peace apps, okay? Personally, I don't think that uh, it's a problem of uh, number of downloading. Uh, that can be a part of the discussion, but if you make clear the value add to the, the people and uh, making a good communication, I think we will have the, the download very easily and the people will use the app. Okay. So that's part of the vote uh, last year. So that the next session, I guess, this afternoon. We'll, uh, we'll have some questions like that. And the vote last year uh, make in evidence that uh, the vast majority of votes went to the sense where people want, uh, want a common framework 
for the for the question. So we'll see uh, if it's still the case with uh, my colleagues and with the audience afterwards and uh, what uh, people think about that in 2015. So now I have uh, some questions. Uh, I think Thomas is not. Uh, uh, I have a question for him uh, because he's, he's one of the PSAP in Europe uh, who started to implement uh, one or two app in uh, Iceland. Um, so I had a chance to, to talk uh, to him when we, we prepared the, the document, the application strategy. So, uh, I'm, I'm asking a question, I'm Thomas for two minutes. <laughs> so, my question for him was, okay, you, you, you implement uh, uh, one more two app in uh, Iceland, it was in 2030, and uh, if it would be today to, to do the same, what is your lesson learned and if you have been done this, um, the same since or you would have been done since the thirty. So what what uh, completely he told me uh, is he answered the, the issue on download, obviously. Uh, so it doesn't reach uh, criticism much for uh, him to say, okay, that's been a success. Okay, one one, one thing. Second thing is um, they designed the, the apps at the beginning, thinking that uh, it would be really interesting to have uh, one one two app in the mountain area, not so close of the volcano, and uh, and the uh, rural zone. Meanwhile, the majority of uh, usage have been in the dense urban area. So it, it was this uh, uh, consultation. Um, he's a supporter of the, the, the job um, we are doing with INA. His uh, only comment is about uh, he would prefer to have, uh, let's say, a regular standard uh, way of doing three uh, regulations or mandate and so on. So that's uh, what he's uh, telling me. He's, he's believing that, but uh, he would prefer to have a sustainable uh, um, solution based on, on control plan, I guess, or user plan, but more uh, with uh, uh, some uh, criteria and rules defined by, uh, by EC. Okay. So that's, uh, that was the question. I hope you will have. Uh, okay. um, Second question is uh, for uh, Kurt. So, Kurt, could you tell us uh, about your uh, your implementation or next implementation in uh, in uh, Belgium? Uh, so, as I mentioned, you you are launching a one one two hub. Uh, and uh, you, you mentioned that it's inspired in the first session of the document uh, uh, in Atrodius. Can you tell us your driver, the, the target, uh, what, uh, what's the next uh, next Thank you. Um, as you said in the beginning, I'm working for Astrid, which is in Belgium, a semi-k rental organization delivering uh, services to all emergency uh, PSAPs. So that's quite unique and that's also an advantage for us because last year the Belgian government asked us to work out uh, an app system for Belgium, so a nationwide and national supported uh, app. So the first thing we need to do and we did uh, was to sit together all, all our end users, mostly call takers and stakeholders of the different organizations of fire management and police. So we were able to define uh, a neat set of requirements, uh, mostly from the 
this website, what is the information they want to acquire, in what way do they want to uh, have the information presented, and what level of integration the piece of software should be available. So uh, all these requirements were put together in a tender, which was launched uh, final in the end of 2013. We picked uh, the best supplier, of course, and uh, we started developing. And what's unique in our case that is that uh, in Belgium, Astrid is then the application provider, we are the service provider, and we are the PSAP provider for most of the uh, PSAPs in the world. So this means that we can control the complete technical flow, we, have, uh, we control the complete architecture from app up till PSAP, and also we control together with our end users the operational workflow from the app until the PSA uh, application. Um, so this is, uh, the work is almost done now. Uh, we still have to do some load tests. That's the only thing. And then by this summer we would start up with beta users, some very friendly users we hope. And then by the beginning of next year we, we hope that we can publish it on the different platforms so everybody can use it. Um, this means that at this moment we have our own architecture, but uh, we participate in all the works for uh, setting up the first documents on uh, uh, common architecture. This means that we are open, and certainly Brussels as a European capital, we certainly want to support the fact that uh, there needs some kind of standardization and followed by certification, which means that. Uh, we expect, or Belgian population expect, that the Belgian <coughs> national emerging app can be used in another country, but also vice versa, that somebody of another country comes to Belgium, and if this application is certified towards a certain standard, or at least our standard, then the application will be done. Uh, there's no discussion about that, and the architecture we defined up to now is in that way that it would be quite easy to uh, accept uh, another standard in parallel or adapt our system because we, we control the complete uh, architecture so that should be quite easy and uh, if needed we are certainly willing to do that. Thank you Kurt for this uh, information. So now one question to Jordi so from Adify. Uh, Adify has implemented uh, as you said the app in several uh, regions of, of, of Spain, and I suspect uh, the users of the uh, are requesting you to be able to use the, the, the application in all uh, regions of Spain and, and uh, what was beyond Spain and uh, other regions and country. So, first, what, what is your opinion about the, this project, the Common Framework, where we are uh, putting together? And is that something that can solve the, the issue of the, of the users and what, what you see? Hi, good morning. Um, well, yeah, that's something that has been an issue with the users. They always ask, where can we use the, the app globally? Can we go anywhere to be able to, you know, is it only in my region? Can I move around? So that is something that we, actually I agree with my colleague here, that we should have a common ground to be able to integrate the apps so that they can work anywhere you go so to be able to have a common structure especially have a certification so that not just any app would work so that the user also feels comfortable and confident that the app they're using um, is reliable because nowadays we have so many apps just popping up so many it seems like anybody can just develop an app so it's important especially talking about security that the user feels secure feels safe understands that that app is really going to save their life or help them in case of an emergency. So, yeah, we should we should really work towards having that common ground and be able to integrate apps all around. Okay, thank you, Kitty. So, um, what needs to be done actually? Uh, so, James, please tell us your uh, point of view. How do you see the next steps? First question and the second question, can you explain uh, who should be the stakeholders involved in that uh, project? Okay, 
so um, I think as we've just heard here, right, we, we've got lots of app providers. So that basically means that these people are producing the, the piece of software that runs on your, on your um, smartphone, and they're also producing the, the kind of intermediary that, that receives that information and pushes it onto the piece app. Um, so I think that we can't easily go through and, and say, well, you know, here is the interface that you must use between your app and your and your service, which then you then use to push to the to the piece app. So um, you know, you and I have had this discussion, and I think that our uh, kind of strategic document outlines that in fact that needs to be left largely proprietary and, and, and not played around with. Um, where I do think that we need to introduce certification processes and we need to, to define standard interfaces is how we get uh, push data from, from, from one service provider service, servicing a piece of an application to another one in another country. Because I think that largely people are going to feel much more comfortable talking back to the app provider that they actually you know, went on board with and signed on with than talking to somebody um, talking to a third party app that they may have a trust relationship with somewhere else. So I think that it's very important that people are going to, to, to feel comfortable with the people that they originally signed up for and that the, that application provider is in a, in a position to be able to use a standard interchange to, to the application provider in the place where, where, the, where the subscriber actually is or the caller actually is. So I think that those are the mechanisms that we need to define and those are the things that we're going to concentrate on in the next architecture to ensure that, that those interfaces are standardized so that you know, Geordie's application can easily talk into Kurtz and vice versa. Um, so that, that's where I think we need to concentrate. I think we need to concentrate on that, and I think that those are the interfaces that we need to certify. So um, in terms of the stakeholders, um, I think that we've got the current app providers as, as the stakeholders and the people that use those applications. And we very clearly have got these set organisations at the other end that, that need to be uh, stakeholders in terms of how they perceive those security, the, you know, the security of that information and, and the validity of that information so that they don't get flooded by people uh, just pushing information into them. Yeah, thank you, James. So, yeah, the, the last question uh, uh, before to leave. The question to the audience concerns the certification program. So we talked about uh, earlier about security, um, application providers, service providers, PSAPs. Um, so that's the, the challenge uh, we have to, uh, to be able for application provider to connect uh, and send uh, uh, very secure, securely the data the, towards the, the PSAP. So, quick question is: uh, I think that's <coughs> when we all with the certification program should be uh, should be planned. So, can you just uh, James, can you please give us uh, some more uh, view on that? Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of tough. Um, I, I think I think we need to understand, you know, what what some of the data rules are because the, those aren't very consistent across Europe. In terms of uh, what data you're allowed to keep and what data you're not allowed to keep and who you're allowed to give it to. Um, I think in, in this case, to a large extent, uh, if, if you're somebody that's downloaded an app and you've provided that information through to your app provider uh, for the purposes of using it for emergency services, then we need to be mindful that the architecture that we put in place um, doesn't uh, violate that kind of trust. So we, that needs to be factored into what we're doing and therefore there needs to be security and privacy associated with that. And we need to put rules into, into what the various entities in terms of the exchanges are allowed to keep versus what they simply have to forward and forget. Um, in terms of the security aspects for the apps and things like that, we obviously need to be able to um, authenticate the, the entities that are pushing that data whether that's a transitive trust relationship, which it will have to be to some extent in order to make this work. Um, we need to have a mechanism whereby you know, it's easy to come back and, and, and turn off apps that are misbehaving, for example, and stop them from feeding information into these apps if something else is going on. Um, and again, you know, the certification needs to be around um, 
you don't get that security mechanism in place. <laughs> you're not granted unless unless you meet the particular data formats and the exchange exchanges. And so we're going to need to put um, some sort of uh, high level certification um, test bed in fact in place where people can come and actually test those interchanges to ensure that they are going to be compliant. Um, and, and I think that that's, that's going to be essential. So you know, we're going to need to look at that in terms of how we, how we go through with our strategy to support that. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you. So I think that all the things will, uh, will be reflected in the, the next uh, work we are going to do within uh, INA uh, with such uh, all the uh, strategic objectives uh, as we discuss. Um, just a question for you, Kurt. Uh, talking about the uh, certification program and so the, your plan to, uh, to integrate more applications, as uh, you uh, think about kind of uh, a program or that's ongoing? No, not yet. In the first phase we are concentrating on getting up our own app and, and the build part for it where the minimum set of data will be stored. So uh, that's not the case, but as I said in the beginning, we, we, the moment we wrote our specifications, we took that in mind that other apps might be using uh, our, uh, our system also. But there are no real plans uh, at this moment, I guess we will wait for the work of uh, INA for the standardization and the certification and uh, after that work has been done we hope and we are open that other application providers might come to us and say okay we are certified and uh, can we work with you or can we can our users also use your app <coughs> thank you Kurt. so we have a chance to, to have Thomas it's what's on from as well. Uh, hello, Thomas. Uh, I think that we, we should uh, continue in a few minutes. So, ju just uh, as uh, you, you are with us, can you summarize a few words um, uh, of the situation in uh, Iceland and uh, what's in your plan with the uh, moment you have? Well, we have had the app out for three years now. <coughs> sends an SMS to the 112 uh, center uh, with a location. Uh, I think we are basically ready for the AML solution of the, the UK. And uh, that's where we will be headed, because like everybody else has found out, that uh, users that end up in trouble don't really have already downloaded the app. So what we have had in the past, uh, I don't think the app has yet saved any life. But it has helped us in shortening the location time of some incidents. Most of the time where uh, somebody has come across somebody else's problem. Because uh, only when they have a problem by themselves, they are so emotional that uh, they don't think of the app. So, uh, yeah. I, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good idea. It's a workaround a problem. But uh, it's not the solution. Okay, so I think that's what we have a different point of view. That's good. That's make the debate interesting. Um, so now uh, I think that uh, we can turn around and ask a question in the audience. They may 
are not recognized for this kind of democracy one is, is all about. So how do we persuade the citizens to say this app is, you know, cheat over the various requirements from a security data protection perspective? And how do we tell them that this is a good app and this is a not so good app, shall we say? Okay, so I think that certification is something that is a must, okay, because I think that the at the end the citizen they see that the entities approve a certain app, say, okay, we check this app, we see it's reliable, it works, it can integrate, it can work together with the PSAP. Um, that is very important. From the other, on the other hand, the app developers, I think that having the certification helps to avoid having just any app working out there connected with the one one two. Um, on our side, we work really hard towards having the app working. There are a lot of people working with developing it. So I think it's important for the end user, for the citizen, to feel confident on the, the app that's in their hand is really going to help them when they have the emergency. So I think that certification is a must. Yeah. Um, so I think that, that you know one of the things that, that we've seen here is that, that these are all kind of standalone one one two apps. Uh, I guess I don't necessarily see the future of, of, of the way in which this stuff goes as them solely being one one two apps. I see the one one two functionality from an application point of view potentially being built into other applications, and, and the lower we can make that bar, the, the, the easier it will be. So somebody might be able to pick up the app. API, for example, and stick it into their WhatsApp application or something like that. So, in that sense, you don't necessarily have something that, oh, I've got to remember to enable the 112 app in order to do this. You are already using the, the communication mechanism that you're, talk, that you're using, and it has this added capability into it. And that's, that's one of the key reasons why I think that that's important. Thank you. My name is Helen Hofield and I'm from the Swedish Post of the Telecom Authority. Uh, in Sweden we don't have these apps yet, but we are working on it. And my question is, uh, do you think it's better to wait until this document that Irina is um, working on is finished before we do this? Wow, well, that's a good question. Um, so one, one of the things that, that, that when we did the first version of, of the Ena app, we were very conscious of the data formats that we were suggesting. And one of the key reasons for doing that was that we wanted to see these, the, the app mechanism as a stepping stone to the NG112 solution, whether you were like to do that with discrete kind of entities in the way in which the current LTV document suggests, or even if you were like to implement that on top of some sort of IMS framework, the data formats are all the same in both of those. So the 3GPP stuff, for example, was picked up and used the ITF protocols for that on the ITF formats. And so the apps document that we wrote the first time around is using exactly that capability uh, in terms of the data formats. So if you're looking at building an app from a data format perspective, um, you can use the same, the, the, the existing document. If you're looking at um, the routing mechanism that's being proposed from, from the app itself in terms of how it finds the, the app provider, then that is something that will actually change in the second architecture. So uh, at the moment, in, in the existing document, we actually define what the format is between the app and, and the app provider for want of a better term. Uh, that um, was a mistake um, because th there are, as we know, a plethora of applications out there already and they're going to continue to use whatever they want to use to communicate between, between the app and, and whoever provides that app. But the interconnect between that app provider and other applications is the thing that will need to be standardized, and that's the piece that we will be addressing in, in the next document, and it will essentially use the same uh, uh, data formats that we have within the first document. Does that answer your question? Just a complement of information. Uh, in terms of uh, timing, 
we, we plan to, to raise all the strategic objectives uh, filled by the end of uh, this year. So starting with uh, reviewing the architecture, uh, that should be available hopefully uh, during the summer. Other question? Okay. Um, I think I was actually agreeing with James, but just to clarify. Um, I, I actually don't think you know, certification of the apps themselves is, is, is necessarily useful at all. Um, what we need to do is remove the barrier so that the application service providers have the confidence to stop saying, you know, when you, when you sign up to the thing that you can't use this for 112. Uh, because they have no, no confidence in that they, they can actually meet their legal requirements or whatever. So uh, they need to standardize the interface between the, or at least certify the interface between the service providers and the emergency services or the service organizations so that people like WhatsApp or whatever or, or ourselves use our writing applications that uh, we have the confidence to remove that little note that says don't use this app that they're using for all their own purposes. said right first, um, and I'm not necessarily sure that, 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 you can't, that you're uh, in, in opposite ends. I think what Andy is saying that um, anybody that provides an app generally has uh, the app that lives on the smartphone and some sort of, um, I call them an application provider, but I think Andy used the term service provider. Um, and whatever the interface is across there doesn't need to be certified. Um, the app itself on the smartphone doesn't need to be certified. What needs to be certified is the communication from the app provider end into the emergency network. And that's the piece that needs to be certified and needs to be able to provide data in the proper format so the right level of security and everything else. Yeah? Yeah. Right. So I think, I think we're all talking the same language. Yeah. It's just that, you know, if you take, Kurt, if you take Jordi's approach, he can put lots of you know sexy functionality into the into the endpoint app and even run that within within the application service as long as the interface that he uses outbound to to another provider or into into the piece app itself uh, is certified then then we then we're good. So when we talk about certification, that's the piece that I that I think of as the certification. Okay, question. <coughs> I'm Hermann Müller from Austria. Um, I have a question. Uh, I think in the, in the mind of us is somehow the one app or a market of several apps that uh, is the one uh, one of two apps. I wonder whether anybody um, put effort in segmentation of the uh, target users who really does first aid and uh, uh, emergency calling. And I think there's a certain segmentation if uh, emergencies are in the public area and uh, whether they're in the private area. And I feel that um, there are certain segments of people that are trained, that have their first aid in training and so on, that are, or that are volunteer firefighters or volunteer paramedics and so on. Those are typical those that really do it. And they um, are somehow connected with their own apps from their own organization and things like that. And those are those that do it. Also for the uh, for health emergencies, uh, I think um, quite a number comes from people with chronic diseases. They are with uh, the heart association, with the diabetes association, so they are somehow connected in their in their field. And my question is whether it would be a 
practical approach to um, link these apps to these uh, to these uh, segments of uh, users, and and there may be another segment of those people that are totally incompatible with first date. I think you all know them. If, it, uh, if I look in my family, I could name some people that wouldn't never manage it. Just so they wouldn't never use an app either. So my question is: Did anybody do that, or is this a good idea? Okay, if I well understood the question is: Is we can uh, reuse uh, the mechanism that we want to implement for one one two to communities? I mean, first responder, for instance, or any other segment. That's the question uh, to use. The ability uh, that brings the PMA and the Pan-European Mobile Emergency Community uh, application, emergency application to other communities. Um, this. I guess I'm not quite understanding, but it, it feels like that there are, there are two aspects. There is, is one making the information that comes from those applications available to people on the ground, that's, that's one option. Um, or are you talking about um, kind of closed user groups and, 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 and that environment? Because it's not, it's not terribly clear to me what, what it is that we're trying to achieve. I'm sorry. The point is, uh, for many people that are totally chaotic and not really able to do it, they are, uh, it's too complicated even for them to call one or two. This is one type of yeah. persons. And if you give them an app, it's not easier because they right. waste time with, with doing a run. And then there are a lot, a lot of people which are trained that somehow link to certain communities. And I think from, a, from sharpening the approach, it could be an approach to uh, tailor-make these applications, this uh, user interface certification to those user groups that really do it out, out in the field. So it's not that anonymous. So the idea of some people that are not even able to handle their smartphone well, but being in the mountains and doing around, this is uh, perhaps not the primary target group, but the primary target group made the experienced mountaineer that really trained it at home with this training and so uh, in this whole concept of apps, uh, uh, put an emphasis on these uh, communities, and this has, I think, has an impact on the certification discussion and all this and all this uh, stuff. Yeah. yeah I, I guess I'm still struggling with how that feeds into the certification mechanism because the certification mechanism will really be based on what data you push uh, towards the emergency service aspect. Um, you're not certifying that a user interface has a button at the top right hand corner, for example. Um, that's aesthetics which each application provider will come up with on their own. So, in terms of the special groups that you're talking about, um, I'm guessing that you, you could define an interface that, that either they could use, so to speak. Um, you know, they've got to be able to communicate somehow. Um, otherwise, you know, why are we talking about apps at all? Um, so, as I kind of said, you know, in answer to Tony's question, you would integrate this capability into the into the communication mechanism that they're already using, whether that's a web interface or whatever. Um, and so, in that case, you still don't need to certify what the what the actual endpoint application is. You need to ensure that the information that gets passed out of the service that that talks to is compatible with the other systems. Does that answer your question? Okay, uh, thank you everybody uh, for the questions. Thank you to uh, my colleagues. We, we now uh, close the, the session. Just precise that um, uh, the strategy document uh, and the phase uh, to, uh, to collect uh, our requirements is open. So we uh, welcome everybody to participate to, to, this, uh, to this task and uh, we'll get back information anyway uh, later on. So that's uh, the break now, and uh, after the break, uh, so uh, we, we do have a next session um, at 11.50, so hot topic using unset derived location information during emergencies. Thank you very much.